Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to Axel's Garage. We're in Lynchburg, Virginia. And we're buying a lawnmower. All right? Easy thing to do. I didn't really thought much about cutting the lawn. But it's 2022, so you're going to buy something. You, you go online and you search around for lawnmowers and see what kind of lawnmower. Like anything else, there is just way too many choices. And I went into a... YouTube, Google, internet rabbit hole, which led me to hundreds of videos I watched over the course of two weeks to buy a stupid freaking lawnmower. So, we're in Lynchburg, getting a lawnmower for my cousin and my son so they can cut the lawn because they don't have a lawnmower. And they got a decent sized lawn, too small for our, a, a, like a double width walk behind. Um, too small for a ride-on, um, unless you got like a real small ride-on that was real cheap. So a regular, a regular push mower, this is about the, the biggest lawn you'd want to do with a regular push mower. So narrowed it down to the Toro and the Honda. I got an idea of which one I think we're going to wind up getting, but we're going to go into Home Depot here. Hopefully they have all of the models. They did about a week ago when I checked uh, the local inventory. Uh, but who knows what could have happened now. So we're going to go in, we're going to check it out, and hopefully we come out with a mower. So not only is the battery dead in my microphone, so excuse the audio until we find another battery, which we couldn't, what couldn't we find the battery in Home Depot? They didn't have a battery in the checkout aisle. They double A no batteries. Where am I going? Let me go straight. Straight? Straight. Oh, I gotta go in that way, I see. Okay, so, they had in 1, the Toros, feet, use the left lane but not the left. Toros that we wanted, which they, I don't understand this. Toro has the Super Recycler and the Recycler. Can't get the Super Recycler in the, in the regular stores. You have to go to a dealer for that or buy it online. It's a little pricey. So I was going with the Toro Recycler and the comparable Honda, and they had the Toro Recycler, but they didn't have the Honda. And I could have sworn they had it online. We looked it up online with the um, with the Google, and they just don't have it in there. They don't carry Honda in this store. You could buy it online and have it shipped to this store, but they don't carry it in this store. The nearest Home Depot that carries Honda is like 40 miles away. So, no good there. So we're going to Lowe's now, and. Um, it's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to be uh, the Honda, I think. It's gonna be the Honda, because we're going to Lowe's and Lowe's doesn't have Toro. We wanted to compare the Toro and the Honda side by side. I got a good chance to look at the Toro in this store, um, and I think in that recycler, you know, four hundred and four hundred and thirty to four hundred and fifty dollar range, the Honda's. Uh, got the edge on it so we're gonna go see if we can get a Honda the HRN 216 and we'll see if we can get this thing we're supposed to have like 14 of them in stock at this Lowe's that we're going to now so this Lowe's has a Waffle House out front this has got to be a good Lowe's if it's got a Waffle House out front I'm a fan of Waffle House. I don't think I've ever been to Waffle House in the daytime, though. It's got to be different in the daytime than it is at 3 in the morning. I mean, that's for all show. Okay, what do we think? So how does that girl have four chins? She's not fat. She, she walks around like this and, and gives herself four chins. All right. Success. It's getting dark. Honda HRN 216 VKA. They had a whole stack of them. We had to get the guy to go up there with the who's Mawatsi, and uh, he went up there and got it. Painless, painless experience. What I don't like, and I noticed this both at Home Depot and Lowe's, is that they don't put the mowers, the display mowers, out on the floor. They put them up on a shelf. So you can't play with them and feel them and, you know, turn them and move them and, and 
interact with them? Yeah, interact with them. You know, like you're spending four hundred, five hundred dollars on a mower. You know, it's not like you're buying a mower for, you know, I think the cheapest mower they had there was two ninety nine. Get this, the two ninety nine mower, you couldn't even adjust the height. It was a fixed height mower for two ninety nine. I think the mower that we have at home, Robbie, that it's mower, a craftsman we have at home. It's a craftsman, it's twenty years old, and it runs like a top. I once I had to take the carburetor apart and clean it. And it probably cost I am saying I probably paid hundred and thirty nine, hundred and forty nine dollars for that. Now, uh, a two hundred ninety nine dollar mower doesn't even have adjustable wheels. Ridiculous. Anyway, we got a battery for the mic, and we'll get this thing out of the box and start it up first thing in the morning. All right. So the next day, we got it. Uh, got it out here. I don't know. I think maybe we'll take it apart on the tailgate. It might be easier to mend it down. But it's the uh, HRN two sixteen VKA. I think they. Um, Certain big box stores have it as VKAA. It's the same same unit. It's the uh, HRN series, which is, I think, the HRX is the top of the line series. It's like the difference between the, uh, the Toro Recycler and the Super Recycler. So this would be compatible or the competition of the Super, of the Recycler, not the Super Recycler. Let's see if we can pop that one without wrecking the box there. Some packaging will probably just rip down one side and then pull it out. Be the easiest way to do it. So let's go. There you go. You do have to be careful. I watched a couple of videos where people um. The, the bag is laying across the top. I don't know if it's the Hondas or the Toros. This bag was kind of smushed up over there, but they cut open the top of the box and, and damaged the, uh, the bag, which would really stink. All right. So it looks like uh, we can grab the front. We can grab, grab it over here. You got it out on the front? Mm -hmm. So you said you wanted to do this on the cover? Oh, well, we did. I mean, cut the box off. All right. This here is holding the, um, this is the, 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 like the safety, the safety bar thing. You know, you gotta be squeezing this for the engine to run. We're gonna leave that on. I'll, I'll show you why we're gonna leave it on. Um, Dagon engine has no oil. All right, now, over here, let's see where the handle goes. Looks very... Right, you turn it this way, so it's a, a quarter turn. So turn it that way. Mm -hmm. You got your quarter turn. Yep. All right, and you can move so it there. to where you want it. Let me see. There's good. Yeah. You can only go lower. Here. So you want to go here? You think? No, the first one. From the bottom. Yeah. Right there, you think? Yeah. It could go lower. It can't go higher than this. Right. That doesn't seem too bad. All right, we're leaving this on for a reason. All right, uh, engine's got no oil. How does it raise? All right, right over here, see? All right, oh, so there's, there's four. Inside. That's top height. Where's the other one on this side? That's that side. Oh, right here. So that's four. I'm gonna go down one notch. All right, so it comes with a bottle of uh, 10W30 Honda oil, 
They say you can use 530. Um, came with this 1030. It's going to take the whole bottle. There's a little um, lube on the dipstick there because there was some, I'm sure, some oil or something like that. Uh, funnel? I don't know. Funnel. All right, so that's the Earl. Let's do it with cut. We'll let that settle in for a couple of minutes. Um, this way it drains all the way back down. And we'll add some gas. Um, one of the things that I liked about looking at this compared to remove protective film before use. Where's the protective film? Blade. Huh? Is there one on the blade? Protective film. Remove protective film. What's that mean? No. Is there a film on top of this? I don't see any protective film. film label. That doesn't even want to come off. Holy cow. Is it the sticker? That whole big sticker? Is there a film on this? Is it the sticker? No, okay. I don't think so. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. <laughs> Like, I couldn't even tell there was a protective film on there. That's Holy cow. protective God. film? It protects the label here. I guess. Alright, so one of the... There's a bee following there. One of the things that I did like is... It's like an automotive gas cap. It clicks, and it's got a huge opening here. Alright, and we got a... We got a gas can, which is brand new. So it's got an environmentally safe gadget here, which environmentally safe means you're going to spill it because they suck. Um, so I'm going to try to do the best I can. In this is non-ethanol fuel. And let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Non-ethanol fuel and some, oh, wow. I like this one. I thought I could figure out how to put the Okay. Well, I put a little gas in it. It's not full yet. And I'll, there's a reason for it because we're going to have to top it off. Okay. So we got a little, little fuel in it. Nope, there's no primer. See, oh, oh, Steven wanted a primer a bunch. All right, I just want to check my, my Earl, make sure it's on the dipstick. All right, see, so no primer. This has auto choke, auto prime. So you're not supposed to have to prime it, all right? But what the instructions tell you to do is they tell you to run it five hours on this oil. Five hours on this oil here and then change it. But would you do that in a car? If you were building a car engine, brand new car engine. Change the oil. Right, what do you do when you, you break the cam in or break it in, you dump that oil fast, right, after your 20 minute cam break in. So these don't really have a cam break in, but they do have a break in. So the school of thought is to run it for uh, about 25 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes, run it. That's why we left that uh, thing on there so we don't have to hold the handle for so long. Run it and then dump that hot oil out when it's hot so that we can put fresh oil in it. We did buy another bottle of the Honda oil, which you don't have to get the Honda oil. We just did because it was there on the shelf and it was convenient to get it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a couple of, I don't want to start it pulls. I just want to roll it over. And this is just a breaking thing. This is not my idea. I did see this on one of the YouTube videos in a giant wormhole that I went down looking at lawnmowers. So, 
I just wanted to turn that motor over a couple times so that that fresh oil, if there's no oil in there, there was nothing that was usual, it could get it over some of the moving parts before we started. So now we just put gas in, like Steve O looked for the primer, there's no primer, there's no choke, it should all be one oil, so it's supposed to be one pull. So we're gonna pull it and we are gonna let it run for 25 uh, minutes or so and then we're gonna dump that oil out and we'll, uh, we'll catch back up with you when we dump that oil, let's see if it starts on the first pull. All right, so we ran it 25 minutes, just turned it off. So we would expect that the oil is hot. I'm hoping this plastic container puts up with the heat. Robbie flipped it over to me. I expected it to be darker. Right now, if you work in the oil up to the light, you see the little shiny particles in it? Glistening. Just a little bit of shiny particles. On this side, you can see it. Well, if it comes to our camera, just little, 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 tiny little specks. That is little metal shavings. And those little metal shavings are good because that means, you know, everything's seated and broken and wore in the way it's supposed to, but bad if you leave it in there. So you change it hot because when it's hot, just like when you change the oil in your car, you're supposed to change it when you're hot to keep all the dirt and particles in suspension when the oil's hot and dump it out while it's still hot. So that's what we did. Got all the bad stuff out and we are gonna take another bottle of, it's in the milk crate, another bottle of, uh, of that Honda 10W30 oil. And like I said, you can use any good quality 10W30 or 5W30 oil in these engines. The uh, reason why we grabbed the Honda is because it was right there on the shelf, nice and convenient. It's the right size. If I was home and I have a uh, oil store on the shelf in the garage, we wouldn't have had to buy any oil. So we'll take this, and it might not actually take the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in most of this, and um, it might not need the, the full 12 ounces because there might still be like two ounces left in there that didn't drain out from tipping it over. So I'm going to pour about about eight to ten ounces of this in, and then we'll check the level. So I got. It's hard to see the oil, you know, is so clean, but it looks like it's in the full hash marks. Um, this doesn't have a little window on it, but it feels like there's about that much left in it. So I'm guessing um, probably about ten ounces of the twelve ounces in this went back in. Um, we'll run it, use it, and then check the oil again. But it's at the, it's at the the full level on the dipstick. It's just hard to see because it's clean. You know, once the oil gets dirty, it's really easy to see. But if you you pull it up, you can see that you got an oil, an oil drip right there above the just above the the hash mark. So we're good. Good with oil. And now I can top the rest of the gas off. The reason why I didn't top the gas off when we first put gas in it was I was concerned that. That when we tilted it over, I just wanted to make sure we didn't spill any, but this is a nice big seal on the gas cap. You can see it's a big rubber seal on it. Seal's nice. This thing is actually the best working um, gas, new style gas can I've used. All right, and then it clicks. Now, your wheel adjustments, all right, are only on this one side. So this does the front, see, up, up, down, and that one does the back the same way. A trick um, that I saw um, watching a bunch of videos on these things was that you set the front one click higher than the back. So you set your height in the back, and then whenever the back is, you come to the front and just make it one click higher 
then the back and you get your best cut. Unless you got a really nice lawn, the whole best cut thing, who gives it? Yeah, nobody notices that shit. Um, unless you got a really beautiful lawn that people, oh, look at that lawn. That's not the case here. We just want to cut the grass. So, on this side here, Steve, if you want to grab here, is your uh, control for your mulch or big. Right, so you can, you got a little lock there, and you can go to big, and it locks in. And I believe if you leave it somewhere in the middle, it'll like half big, half mulch, um, and then it locks in over there. So I don't know if that's something that it just does, not by design when you have the doorway half open, because there's no lock for it. So it wasn't designed to be half open. It's big, and it locks in, and then mulch, and it locks in. All that does is control a door back here, Steve-O, if you want to come around the back. All right, so you got, this is where the door is, and right now it should be closed. I can't really see it. And then, can you see it? Yeah. All right, and then close there. So we're bagging down to the bag, and the mulch down to the mulch. And Robbie, you wanna grab the bag? We're gonna mulch so the bag's not too much of a concern for us. They might bag on occasion. I don't know if they, they really ever will. But for the bag, all right, you just lift, lift up. Bag comes in and there's two grooves right here where the metal things just pop in and that's it for the bag. All right, and you pull that in, out like that. And if you leave it on bagging, because there is no side discharge. That's something that they changed with it with uh with the new new lawnmowers to the regular homeowner grade lawnmower, like this one is at the high end of the, the homeowner grade. It's not their high end line, but it's their middle of the road line, which is really for a guy that hasn't bought a lawnmower in 20 years, this is a lot more high end than we used to buy. They got rid of the side discharge. Like it's a, I'm sure it's a cost savings thing. So you can't blow it out the side if you want to blow it out the side if the grass is long, too long to mulch. So what they yeah, have in this one is, it'll rear discharge so it's gonna it's gonna come out that's why this thing doesn't close flat all the way down it's gonna rear discharge right under and then you're gonna you're gonna in, in essence walk through it but you're walking through it anyway even on a side discharge because when you make the next pass you're walking through it so you can have no bag and no mulch if you wanted to by putting it in the bag position not putting the bag on and it's gonna rear discharge instead of side discharge if you go up to the x to the hrx you get a side discharge just like in the Toros and in, in the in this the recycler, you don't get a side discharge anymore. They do give a, a rear chute that sort of directs it to the side, doesn't come with the mower, but they send it to you free if you buy the mower. And that sort of directs it away from your feet a little bit. But you gotta go up to this top of the line super recycler series, which is like the HRX series, to get a, a true side discharge. For all purposes, it really doesn't matter. Now coming around to this side, a unique feature on the Honda is that the other, a lot of the other mowers in this size don't have is a fuel shutoff, which you have right here. So when you're done mowing, Robbie, you can turn it to the off position just like a, a quarter turn valve on a hose or something like that, right? If it's in line with the, with the hose, it's open. And if it's cutting the hose in half, it's off. Got that, Robbie? Mm -hmm. All right, and the only other thing that we didn't cover on this one is going to be your your smart drive control. So that's your uh, control for your for your drive. Now you would have right. They're calling this the blade control. This is going to kill the engine, so it's not just the blade control. So you're going to be running the engine, be running like this, and then when you want to go, all right, you can press it with your thumb. You can press it with the fat of your hand like that. You can use either one. Doesn't matter. And it's got this little adjustment here so that you can put it where it's going to be most comfortable for you. So if you want it down here, you can put it down there. Um, you can move it up to there, put it up there. It's whatever comfortable for you. And we'll show you right now. See, second time we're starting it, new oil in it. Let's see if it starts on the first pull. Got your drive control. They say top speed is like four, four and a half miles an hour, which is pretty fast for walking. Um, what it's actually doing is, there's a belt on two pulleys. How it works, 
and the belt is constantly slipping when it's not being run and when, when you press this what you're doing is you're just moving one of those pulleys to make the belt start grabbing so when it's going slow the belt is slipping a little bit and the more you push it the more pressure it puts on the pulley to engage the belt until it's fully engaged when it's fully engaged you're right here four or four and a half mile per hour brisk walk got it you understand because this is uh, apparently going to be your job mm -hmm. all right and uh and that's it really i like it if uh the reason why we chose the honda over the recycler was was pretty much the drive control uh, mulching capability and everything else they both have great reviews of course there's going to be a a, a a weak point in the honda and the toro and the different engines and all that stuff and that's all up for you to decide um on what you like which which whether really you like a briggs a toro engine a honda engine if you're going with the the toro series they can get them all well the honda ones of course only have honda engines it's really it's a lot of personal preference it's really up to you. They're both going to be good mowers. The, the weak point on this one, on the Honda specifically, is a thermo wax switch, which is the automatic choke switch. It's a real small part, real easy to replace. They do, they are known to fail. Um, that's the only issue with these, with the, the Briggs or the Toro branded engines. They don't have that thermo wax switch. They have another thing that's, that's known to fail on them. I mean, they're engines. Uh, things are going to break from time to time. Um, but homeowner grade if you're if you're nice to them chances are you might get one that never breaks i think this one uh this one's going to do the job for them i think if um if they went with the toro recycler the only difference is the drive system the toro recycler has a uh, a handle on it that you push in and when you push the handle and so as you push the mower it engages the transmission and our concern was real hilly here so because it's real hilly, you're steering a lot more and, and, and a little rougher on the handle. So we thought that this drive was going to be better so that you're not trying to, to fight the, the, what they call it like a smart pace or something pace, personal pace. So that plastic handle that, not that it's plastic, but the handle that drives it is also the handle that steers it. And on hilly ground, it might be a little finicky where this will be more consistent on hilly ground. On flat ground, that other thing supposedly works really good. So that's it from Axel's Garage in Lynchburg, Virginia this time around uh, on a Lomo review because we, we'll review anything, anything we buy. It's got an engine, we're reviewing it. Thanks for watching.